What's going on, everybody? Xavier Porter, Shoot the Fire, Brooklyn Fights. We're the building with the one and only. The undefeated, light heavyweights, NABA titleist, Mr. Charles Foster. How you feeling, brother? Good, man. How you doing during these crazy times? Hey, man, I'm hanging in there. Congratulations on the new house, man. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it. That's what's up. That's what's up. I see you, see you done shaved. <laughs> yeah, man. Qu quarantine got to me. <laughs> The hair is growing wild. <laughs> I feel you. I need to get. I need to go do the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> so how you been holding it down during all? You know, during this tough time and everything. You know. Um. You know, just trying to do stuff different every day. You know, just still getting my daily workout in, running, shadow boxing, trying to stay on top of that. And, you know, just mm -hmm. chilling with the family, the kids, getting bored. We just bought a new dog, a puppy, so oh, <laughs> just trying new things. What kind of dog is it? Uh, half chocolate lab, half pit bull. Okay. Seems a lot a lot of fighters are buying dogs <laughs> right now. Yeah. Is, is that the like Yeah, the well, I grew up with dogs, so Oh you grew Yeah. Up. Okay. <laughs> I'm figuring people buy the dogs just to, you know, you gotta run so you might as well take the dog with you. <laughs> yeah, definitely, yeah. You know I mean? So I wanted to chop it up with you real quick about everything that's been taking place with you in your career. Like you said, you maintain it right now, you and your family taking care of yourselves. Um like you say, you say you stay training, you stay in the shape and everything. Now your division is pretty tough, bro. Yeah, it is, man. That's why I'm out here running these five miles daily. You know, I gotta stay on top. I gotta try to be different because you know I know most fighters, man, they, they don't work as hard as me. That's what separates me from the rest of the pack. I, I work hard. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So I know that there was a lot of fights scheduled before this. Uh, pandemic happened so I know once boxing opens back up a lot of these people have been eating and not getting they running in and yeah. they might call me but hey Charles you want to fill in because now I'm number four in the world so you know yes. I just want to make sure when that when that opportunity knocks I'm ready I, I can't use no excuse at all I haven't been working out I'm too heavy nothing like mm -hmm. that so I'm ready yeah one thing I peeped about you I think I called maybe two or three of your fights I've watched a couple of your fights also and, and I see your your, your skill set is very different from a lot of fighters that you face outside of just being a southpaw you know you you come with a lot of different type of strategy your speed is is um how you say people don't people don't realize you got some good speed and some pop in there yeah all right you know, <laughs> working on the, this past fight man I got canceled me and my team and me and my coach we we're working on a lot of stuff we're gonna be very different this fight but it got canceled two days before the fight was supposed to happen so mm -hmm. and we're training them just you know more balanced you know just showing a more aggressive side because most of the time I go in the ring I don't really implement a game plan I, I based it off of how they act so if they're gotcha. aggressive I calm their aggressiveness down if they want to box I gotta be a little bit more aggressive but this time we're going to be aggressive and we're going to make a statement. But, you know, this guy got lucky that this pandemic happened so I was definitely going to make a statement on him. Yeah. I remember being in Philly watching you fight um, Alvin Varmore. And um, a lot of people going into the fight was like, why is Charles – you know, ringside, they're like, why is Charles taking this fight with this guy? they looking at him like baby Mike Tyson. And you went in there yeah. and you went there and just kind of dismantled him, outboxed him, frustrated him, almost knocked him out in a sense. <laughs> you know what I'm yeah, that, that, was a, that was a good fight. That was a really big learning lesson, you know, to show that I'm willing to put my O on the line as well as he was too. But yeah. he, he was going to leave with his. But me and my team, we looked at it and we was like, yeah, that's a perfect fight. The guy's only 5'8. You know, he's more that cruiserweight, big puncher. But yeah. different at this level, you know, there's still a level that I have to reach in the game. But at that level, when me and him fought, that was different because he hit me clean one time in the fifth round. Clean. Yeah. And I didn't get wobbled or anything. I didn't feel his punches that he was knocking those guys out with. So it's different at this level. Gotcha. Now, the top of your division right now sits Bivol. Um, well, I should say better BF, then Bivol. I guess I guess Canelo's no, no longer there because he's coming back down, whatever he's doing. Kovalev moving up the cruiserweight from what I'm hearing. And um, Marcus Brown, Joe Smith, Jesse Hart, and you. Oh, can't forget Pascal. Can't forget Pascal. That is oh, can't correct. Forget him, yeah, that, that's your guy right there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, I helped him. Uh, I helped him. I was his chief sparring partner for that fight with Marcus. Yeah. So, what are your thoughts on a possible fight with any of these guys? You know, um, me, I'm I'm a fighter, so I fight any of them. But you yeah. know, it's up to my team to you know they they say the final say is up to me. But sometimes me being a fighter, I have to be protected from myself because you know me coming up and being a fighter that's my job is to fight 
my team is the their job is to direct me in the right direction. So you know, I got offered fights across seas. I was like, yeah, I'll go. And they was like, uh, they're not paying you enough, you know, or you know, try to get this, or you know, there's not enough. There's no TV exposure. If they are paying you, good case they you know rob yeah. you. Nobody can see it. So I got offered fights with Boazzi, uh Blake Capillero, and stuff like that, and um, you know, just didn't materialize. I even got offered to be bull fight. And uh, right after my last fight in August. Okay. But, you know, I was cut. And I wasn't able to take the fight. I wanted to take it even though, but, you know, if I had to spar, I wasn't going to be able to spar or allow and be ready for a world title. So my coach was like, yo, there's no point of you selling yourself short. You made it this far. Why go into a fight and not being 100%? So yeah. uh, I'll get in there with any of these guys. Now, you said you was, like you just mentioned, you said you was offered a fight with Bivol. Was, was that fight looking to maybe take place – out here or somewhere in Russia, where like you said, I believe it was in it was in Chicago when okay. uh, he fought Lenny Castillo. Okay, his last fight. Yep. So I was supposed to take that fight, but I think I was off suspension for my cut. That's the stand of my last fight to like October first, and the fight was on like October tenth or twelfth or something like that. So yeah. Now you 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 did win the WBA NAB title. Um, that kind of in a sense puts you in the rankings towards fighting the actual WBA champion? How does that work? Yeah, so once you win that title, it puts you in the top 15 mm -hmm. of that, you know, for the ranking. So I defended the title three times. Now I'm ranked number four. So, you know, it was, just, it was a good title to grab up. So then, you know, I'm recognized by one of the belts. But the job is to either grab one of those world titles or get ranked by all four. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it doesn't make you the number one mandatory, but it does get you closer to your, to your shot at a world title. Yeah, yep, yep. So once I won it, I did enter at number 15. I was the, the lowest seed. But as I kept winning and other people lose, my ranking goes up. So now I passed everybody at number four. Now I think ahead of me, I think number one is Pascal. Um, I think Joshua Buati and Blake Capillaro and then me. Okay. Given that, yeah, because Pascal, I believe, has the, the regular WBA title and B-Vol is the yep. WBA super title. Super. Oh, yeah, so the yeah, number yeah. number one is uh, some guy named Dominic Bossell. I think he has oh, the okay. interim title. Oh, he yeah. has the interim. See, the WBA confuses me, man. <laughs> yeah, all, all, these, all these titles, man, all these different sanctioned by, I think now WBC has something called the franchise champion. Yeah. So it's the both the regular champions. It's a mess, man. Yeah, you got interim, you got diamond, you got franchise, then you got, you got regular, then you got super champion of division. <laughs> And it's like just you know, just one bell. It is. Yeah, they they watering down the sport, man. They 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 watering down the you know the the name of world champion. Gotcha. There gotcha. should be one one face of each in each weight division. In my weight division, I feel like I think Baturbiev has the edge on uh, Bevel right now, holding two of the biggest titles. Mm, okay. Have you have you had had you, um been able to get some work with B to B to B better be No, I haven't got no work with him actually. Um. Before my fight, I was supposed to have last month, they asked me to go to camp with him because he was supposed mm -hmm. to fight a southpaw from China to defend his belt. But the timing just wasn't right with the camp and my job. You know, they wouldn't probably let me leave to go over there for two months. So, and then I think my fight was two weeks before his uh, sparring was supposed to happen. So my coach was like, there's no reason for you to, you know, go over there and risk yourself getting cut or, you know, hard, hard sparring like that right before your fight. Yeah. Coach Seller, he got a great plan. Got a great plan for you because you don't want to put you, you don't want to put you in a situation where it affects you in the long run to to your overall goal of becoming world champion. Yeah, because they do no shortcuts. Yeah, they've been around the game for a little bit longer, so they know uh, you know the, they know the business side of it, what it takes. So sometimes, like I said, they have to I have to be protected from myself sometimes. They just <laughs> give me a name. I'm like, yeah, I'll take it. They're like, wait, wait, wait. Let's think. Let's you know, <laughs> ask different questions because you know they they know me. I'm with it. I want I want everything. Mm -hmm. Now your brother's doing pretty good. How, how's he been hanging in there, Mister? Mr. He's Mr. Uh, <laughs> yeah, he, he's he's doing good. I, I mean, during his quarantine, I think I seen him in person once, and not only because I, I ran the opposite way, and he was okay. running at the same time. So uh, that's the only time I seen him. But I know he had a fight scheduled. He was like three weeks away, and they just canceled everything. So you know, he's been maintaining. He's been running a lot because you know our coach, our coach is crazy, man. He got us running five miles every day. You got to post it on Facebook, post a picture <laughs> with us. So, he's like, yo, if you guys don't do this, then we gonna meet at the gym, and everybody's gonna run six feet apart from each other. So I'm like, nah, I just rather get it. Going. He's on, he's eleven and no eight KOs, super featherweight. 
looking pretty good out there, doing very well out there. How much time do y'all yeah. spend? How much time do y'all two spend with each other? Like you know, how you say you know, keeping keeping each other sharp. Um, we spent well. You know, we we grew up together, so boxing's always been. My father was a professional boxer, so yeah. me and him started training at young ages. So you know, boxing is just something that me and him took up, and we really really like. So. uh when I got a fight, me and him, we, we run together. And then sometimes I need pads. He'll give me pad work. He keeps me sharp. And then when it's his turn, I just return the favor. You know, we talk to each other. Then we got our coach that, you know, put me and him together. Not sparring, but, like, mm-hmm. pad work, mentoring each other. We'll do workouts together. You know, we're just always around each other. So this this pandemic has probably been, like, the longest that we haven't really been around each other. So you, you ain't never had to really lay no hands on him. <laughs> uh, nah, the, the, the love is there. We we sparred before, yeah. before a couple times a year, but my my coach watches. He's fast, but you know I, yeah. can't, I can't put two different weight classes too big. Yeah, like you know, you, I remember you just stole my toy back in the day. You gonna get this work now? <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, so I see. Um, God bless Mr. Rosa, Louis Rosa. I see his birthday just passed. Yeah, uh, today's his, today's his, the birthday, yeah. Oh, today's his birthday, excuse me, pardon me. Yeah, so we're doing a little something. We're going to uh, meet up at like 3.30 by Long Wharf out here in New Haven, and then we're going to, you know, drive by the cemetery in cars and, you know, just pay respects to him, show him how much we miss him and everything. Yeah. How much How much of an influence has he had, had, he had on your career? He had a big influence. Even though I was older, you know, he went pro a year before me. He had more amateur fights than me at the time. And, uh... Pro boxing is one of them things. I was like, yo, what should I expect from my pro debut? And everyone says the same thing. They'd be like, I don't know. It's different. <laughs> you know, so they, they, they could they could never explain it. But, you know, I used to look at him and his aggression, his meanness. The first time he called my fight was when I fought Justin Thomas. Rest in mm-hmm. peace to him also. Um, I, Little Lewis had just passed. That's what we call him in the gym, Little Lewis. He had just passed away a couple of weeks before I fought Justin Thomas. I used his motivation and his fighting style in that fight so much to just go forward and be aggressive. Everybody's like, wow, I never seen you that aggressive before. But, you know, I went in there and I wanted to pay homage to him and, you know, make him proud and win that yeah. belt. Okay. I'm happy to hear that, you know, you know what you're doing today and celebrating his, his life and going by with the family and everything. That's a, that's a beautiful thing right there, you know. Thank you. So outside of that, um, if when do you – if if the – Let's say that let's say the the boxing gods opens the gyms, <laughs> or you know they say everybody go back to doing regular things. Would you be open to fighting in um in front of no fans, just media, or would you prefer to have the fans and everybody there? I mean, the fans they give you a lot of motivations where you can hear them screaming, but you know, <laughs> as long as I'm finding that money is coming in, then that's it. <laughs> This, this past fight, man, I, I made weight and everything. The day yeah. before the weigh-in, I was on weight, and I went upstairs, and I was a little drained. I was like, damn, I'm tired. My manager, as soon as she called me, I seen her name on my caller ID. I already knew what it was. I'm like, yeah. damn, this is the call I did not want. So, I mean, I did my job. I made the weight. But, I mean, even if they were like, hey, you guys going to fight, but there's going to be no fans, I'm like, ring the bell. I'm ready. One thing I wanted to co- applaud you on also is that your father – you're a fighter and you still work, you know, how, how, how do you yeah. find balance in it all? Man, I, I, to tell you the truth, I do not know. Cause also I, I work in construction. I'm a mechanical yeah. insulator. So, uh, you know, I wake up at four 30 every single morning. Mm-hmm. I drive maybe half hour to an hour to work and then drive the hour back. I get the rest of the hour. Maybe then I go to the gym. I do my five, seven miles, whatever coach Rosa wants me to do. Then I spar sometimes. I just come home. I see my kids, my wife, make sure everybody's good, and I just wake up and do it all over again. It's tough, but, you know, it got to get done. You know, I want these dreams, these goals, these aspirations to be accomplished. So, you know, there's there's no limits to what, you know, I have to do. Okay. All right, all right. Anything you want Anything else you want to say to your friends and your family out there, and your fans? Um, you know, I just want everybody to stay safe during this time. You know, no, no need for anybody to go outside and – you know, risk yourself, keep yourself, your family healthy, and uh, just be on the lookout for me. Once this is over, we're going to be back in the arena, you know, fighting, making everybody proud, and that's it. All right. There you have it, Charles Forster, 19-0, nine KOs, 
ranked number four in the United States, light heavyweight. Looking to, you know, hopefully get back in the ring soon and get a shot at the world That's title, it. man. Thank all you. Right. Thanks again, man. Appreciate your time. Take you care too. out there, all right? All right, you too, man. Peace. Peace.